Welcome to an example on how to solve a quadratic equation using the technique of factor by grouping. Our goal here is to solve the equation 12x squared plus 20x equals negative 3. We first want to set this equation equal to 0, so let's add 3 to both sides of the equation. This gives us the equation 12x squared plus 20x plus 3 equals 0. Now for our next step, we want to factor the left side of the equation. To do this, we'll use the technique of factor by grouping, where the steps are shown below. So for review, to factor a quadratic expression in the form ax squared plus bx plus c by grouping, we follow these five steps. Where the first step is to find the factors of a, c that add to b, let's begin by identifying the values of a, b, and c. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 12 b is equal to the coefficient of x, which is 20, and c is equal to the constant term, positive 3. So it is important to make sure the equation is equal to 0 before we find the values of a, b, and c. Now we want to find a, c, which means a times c, which would be 12 times 3, which equals positive 36. So we want to find the factors of positive 36 that add to b, which equals 20. So we're looking for two numbers that when we multiply them, we get positive 36, but when we add them, we get positive 20. So if you can just think of the two factors that we need, that's great. If not, I would recommend listing all the factors of 36, which would be 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. So we're looking for the factors that have a sum of 20, Notice how those factors would be positive 2 and positive 18. Positive 2 and positive 18 multiplying give us positive 36, and 2 plus 18 is equal to 20, which equals b. So for step 2, we're now going to write the bx term, or in this case the 20x term, as a sum or difference using the factors from step 1, which means we're going to write 20x as 2x plus 18x. So on the left side we would have 12x squared, again plus 2x plus 18x plus 3 equals 0. Notice on the left side we do have an equivalent expression because 2x plus 18x is equal to 20x. Now you might be asking would it be okay to write 18x plus 2x here and the answer is yes it would still work. Step 3 we now divide or group the polynomial into halves and because we have four terms, the first group, or first half, is going to be the first two terms, and the second group, or second half, is going to be the second two terms. Step four, we want to factor out the greatest common factor from the first half and second half. So looking at just the first two terms, we want to factor out the greatest common factor, which would be 2x. So we'll factor out 2x, again, from just the first two terms. That will leave us with 6x plus 1. And now we want to factor the greatest common factor out of the second two terms, or the second group. The greatest common factor of 18x plus 3 would be 3. So we'll factor out a positive 3, so we'll write plus and then 3. If we factor out 3, we're left with 6x plus 1. And this is still equal to 0. Notice on the left, these two products do share a common binomial factor of 6x plus 1, which brings us to the last step of factor by grouping. We want to factor out the common binomial factor, which again in this case is the quantity 6x plus 1. So if we factor out 6x plus 1, notice how we'd be left with the quantity 2x plus 3, which is our second factor. So now we have the left side factored, and this is equal to 0. Well, if we have a product that's equal to 0, either the first factor or the second factor must be equal to 0, which is a zero product property. So to solve the equation, we now set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. So this product equals zero if 6x plus 1 equals zero or 2x plus 3 equals zero. So here if we solve for x, we would first subtract 1, giving us 6x equals negative 1, and then we would divide by 6. So we have x equals negative 1 sixth, and here we would first subtract 3 on both sides, giving us 2x equals negative 3, and dividing both sides by 2. Notice here we have x equals negative 3 halves. 
So we have two solutions, x equals negative one-sixth or x equals negative three-halves. These are the two values of x that would satisfy the given equation. Now let's take the time to verify these solutions by substituting these two x values into the original equation to make sure the left side is equal to negative three. But let's do this on the calculator. So for x equals negative one-sixth, we'd have 12 times negative one-sixth squared plus 20 times negative one-sixth. And notice how this is equal to negative three, which verifies our first solution. And now we'll check x equals negative three-halves. So we'd have 12 times negative three-halves squared and then plus 20 times negative three-halves. And once again, notice how this does equal negative three, which verifies our two solutions are correct. I hope you found this helpful.